The Masked Singer has finally arrived at the Group C Championships, which means we had to say goodbye to one more member of the group before it was time for... The Super Nine. I think we all know who I'm talking about when I say I was definitely expecting someone in particular to be sent home, and this episode did not disappoint. But before I let the whole episode go extinct, here's our official recap of the clues, the reveal, and my best guesses for who's left behind each Group C mask. Don't take off just yet though, because you gotta go hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. We love seeing you back here every week, and I know some of you still need to click that button. I cannot help but take that personally. This one's for those of you who are subscribed. You're sweet, we love you. And on we go. Only four contestants starred in tonight's Masked Mayhem, including the Night Angel, the Astronaut, the T-Rex, and the Rhino. Guest starring on the judges panel is none other than Will Arnett, and people were pumped. The network told them to do that. I did ask for it. He did ask for, for it, yeah. Yes. It was the first mandatory stand yes. animation. <laughs> and since he's the host of Fox's new competition series, Lego Masters, each of the contestants brought an extra clue made of Legos. Oh God, blatant cross promotion. But first, the performances. The Night Angel kicked off the show with Shout by the Isley Brothers, which was a performance that had all the judges shout in their praises. God, I'm clever. Up next was The Astronaut with Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, and he was definitely feeling that song on stage. That's the first flirt of the series. Isn't that great, Will? I'm happy to be here for it, for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Third was the T-Rex with Jai Ho, You Are My Destiny by A.R. Rahman and the Pussycat Dolls, which of course Nicole absolutely loved. And last but definitely not least was the Rhino, who performed Tracks of My Tears by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. And let me tell ya, it had all the judges feeling some type of way. At the end of the night though, a little song pandering toward Nicole just wasn't enough to save the T-Rex from this week's elimination. So, without further ado, here's what the T-Rex was trying to clue us into this week. Or her coach, as each contestant had someone close to them give out their clues. The coach hinted, T-Rex subscribes to the idea that there is no off day. I have never met anyone so meticulous, especially someone her age. Meanwhile, we see boomerangs and a plate of fries, chips, and mozzarella sticks covered in glitter. The T-Rex's coach continued, even though she's young, she's got fans of all ages and always knows how to win over a crowd. We then see some wax lips sinking into a vase of water. He finished out the package by saying, so TT, do your thing and I'll see you soon with that golden mask. Wishful thinking, but nah. After her performance, her Lego clue was Poodle with a figure of Will. She said, the connection is with Will because Lego Batman is how we are connected. Well, Will had no idea what that meant, and the judges submitted their final guesses as Jojo Siwa, Tara Lipinski, and Liza Koshy. You out there on YouTube had this one from the beginning with me, including Caddy Rad, who managed to catch a clue that slipped past me last week, and Zoe, who was a bajillion percent sure. Well though, you'll be happy to know that the T-Rex was in fact revealed to be Miss Jojo Siwa. It couldn't have been more obvious. The clues this week hinted at her being a young, dedicated star, and it's no surprise to see a coach presenting Jojo's clues as she's been dancing and performing since she was five years old. She's well known for absolutely loving glitter and has a house full of tasty snacks like those on the plate to match. The word subscribe in the package was definitely a hint at her 10 million plus YouTube subscribers, which, hey girl, wanna send some of those my way? <laughs> and Jojo has a hit song called Boomerang. Her connection with Will was her appearance at the Lego Batman premiere where she was wearing poodle shoes. The coach calling the T-Rex TT was definitely a reference to her name Jojo. And finally, the lips syncing were a reference to the Nickelodeon show she hosts, Lip Sync Battle Shorties. Sayonara Jojo, sorry the show just couldn't handle all that masked energy. But now we have our top three Group C contestants. Here's what they clued us into this episode. Up first, the Night Angel's high school friend hinted, Night Angel always had to juggle school with chasing her dream, so she missed out on a lot like senior prom. We then see a rotary phone off the hook. The friend continued, but one thing she was determined not to miss was earning her diploma. On the wall is an aced astronomy quiz consisting of only moon-related questions. Finally, the Night Angel's friend said, Our graduation conflicted with a huge career opportunity for her, but she refused to miss that day she worked so hard for because that's just Night Angel. After her performance, a man in black revealed the Night Angel's Lego clue to be good times with a little Jenny figure. She said, Jenny, I say your name because I've heard you say my name often on your show. Well, Jenny thinks the Night Angel could be Tony Braxton. Nicole is guessing Taraji P. Henson again, and Will at first guessed Mayim Bialik, but quickly changed to a more reasonable guess, Janet Jackson. <laughs> I've been sitting next to Ken that's for right, a minute. That's right, that's what happens. Right, yeah. It's, it's contagious. It is contagious. Yeah, it's, it's called contagious. Kensmosis. On our last video, Sherry gave us some pretty strong evidence for her guess, Brandy. 
But I'm with Mr. NBA here. The clues this week don't lie. The Night Angel is definitely Real Housewife star Candy Burris. She posted a throwback Thursday image of herself in high school on Instagram, explaining in the caption that she almost missed a performance with Escape so she could attend her high school graduation. In fact, it was the Off the Hook album she was working on, hence the phone Off the Hook. She also shared that she missed her prom and other major high school moments because of her work with the group. The A plus on the astrology quiz was a hint at her son, Ace. The Moon references were a reference to the Rashida song she was featured on, Legs to the Moon. And finally, as she mentioned in her Lego clue, she has indeed appeared and been mentioned countless times on Jenny's serious XM show, The Jenny McCarthy Show. Bam. Next up is the astronaut, and his clues were shared by his bro pilot? Okay. Well, he said, Astro's a great captain, he knows how to lead a crew, but sometimes he can be a total space cadet. One time in front of thousands of people, he took a huge nosedive and fell flat on his face. In the package, we also see a mug with coffee beans, a pair of dice with two fives face up, as well as a three, six, four, and one visible. And a little wooden bridge. As for his Lego clue, a man in black revealed Maul with a Nicole figure. <laughs> Don't you wish your Lego was hot like mine? Wait. The astronaut said, well, Nicole, remember when we were both together to celebrate a huge birthday? No, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> well, Ken thinks it could be Eddie Vedder, Will is guessing J.C. Chazé, and Robin is sticking with last week's guess of Joseph Gordon-Lovett. Terrible guess. On our last video, Jacob agreed with Robin, and Jacob, watch me change your mind. A lot of you also fell for that Lion King red herring, and Reyna, sorry girl, but you're wrong. The astronaut is 100%, no doubt about it, Hunter freaking Hayes. Listen up, Jacob. Hunter is obsessed with coffee, was born in Bro Bridge, Tennessee, and performed at the Capitol 4th 2015 Independence Day concert at the National Mall in DC, which also featured music from, you guessed it, Nicole. Happy birthday, America. As far as the dice go, a few things add up with those, pun intended. First of all, the 10 on top of the dice represents the 10 cities he visited to break the world record of most concerts in different cities in 24 hours. Oh, and if you add all the numbers on screen, it equals 24. And finally, yes, Hunter did take a little spill at a concert in 2013. Honestly, guys, I got this figured out. I don't even know how you can question it at this point. I'm amazing. Calm down, it's not that good. It's not that good. <laughs> Last this week, we have the Rhino, and presenting his clues was his college roommate. What's with all these athletes having college buddies give out their clues? Anyway, his roommate hinted, Rhino is the first person I met when in college. We both had never surfed before, but wanted to try it out. We thought it'd be a walk in the park, but when we hit the waves, we were terrible at it. We then see three quarters and an arrow taped up. The roommate continued, but Rhino kept at it and became a beast out there. The babes just couldn't resist his sick moves, but real talk, that's just Rhino. When he wants to accomplish something, he'll outwork anyone. Meanwhile, the package showed us Mars in a cowboy hat and Missouri with a crown. Finally, after his performance, the Lego clue was for Robin and read 1000. He said, Robin, we think alike. You and I are on the same track, literally. Well, Robin kept the trend going and had no idea what the hit meant, eventually guessing Will Ferrell. Ken had an oh-so-Ken guess with David Hasselhoff, and Will decided now was a good time to have a meltdown and guess himself. Can you sing like this? I don't know, maybe I can! <laughs> <laughs> I'm having an existential crisis here, man! Well, on the last recap, Sega sister here is still thinking Tim McGraw, while Vincent is convinced he's Blake Shelton. Dude, looks like both of you need to keep an open mind like my friend Jose here, because the rhino is freaking Barry Zito. I don't know how to make it any more obvious. In 2009, Zito changed his pitch from a top angle, hence the up arrow, to a three quarters delivery. Three freaking quarters. His son's name is Mars, and his wife Amber was crowned Miss Missouri in 2007. He knows how to surf and went to college in California, and finally was on the soundtrack of the film A Thousand Words. And you know who else was on that soundtrack? Robin freaking Thick. Mic drop, I'm out. If you don't believe me by now, I can't save you. But go ahead and yell at me in the comments anyway, and while you're down there, you know you want to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can get alerted every time we drop a new Mass Singer recap. Come on, don't leave me hanging like the contestants did to Ken this episode. I don't have a Lego Nick Cannon to come to my rescue. You've always been there for me. You are my biological father. <laughs> I love you, son. Thank you. I love you too, Daddy. Now Thank sit you your so ass much. down. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs>